Hello and welcome to the session in which we would learn a very important topic, which is how to compute the tax liability using both the tax tables as well as the tax rate schedule. So as an accounting student, especially taking this introductory accounting course, you need to understand how to compute the taxes using, using both. I'll also show you how to uh, find out what's your marginal tax rate and average or effective tax rate. We explained those topics before, but I will apply them in this example as well. Before I start, I would like to remind you that if you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. If you're a CPA candidate, I don't replace your Becker, Roger, Gleam, or Wiley. I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. I can add those 10 to 15 extra points that's going to help you get to your CPA. How so? I explain the material differently than your CPA review course. Your CPA review course works fast, assumes you know the knowledge. I don't assume anything. I start from scratch. Check out one monthly subscription. That's your risk. Your return is passing the exam. I do have other accounting, audit, governmental costs, advance, other courses as well. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and you can check out my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it on YouTube. Connect with me on link on Instagram and follow me on Facebook. So how do we compute tax liability using both the tax tables as well as the tax rate schedule? Now, before I do that, what I have to do is I have to show you where do you find the tax tables before you know how to use them. You have to know where to find them. Now, I'm going to show you where, where to find them in a typical textbook. Now, if you still have any issues, you should talk to your professor. Tell them, where do I find this tax table or the tax rate schedule? They're both on the IRS website, but most likely if you're using a textbook, they will be in your textbook somewhere. So I'm going to show you where in your textbook they would be typically found. For the sake of illustration, in this textbook that I am using, the tax tables can be found in Appendix D IRS tax table. So these are the tax table, Appendix D for the purpose of what I'm showing you. Now in your textbook could be Appendix A, could be Appendix B, could be at the end of the chapter. I really would not know. Okay. But it's someplace in your textbook and I'm going to show you how to use it in a moment. Notice here you have, although you can't see it very well, but I'm sure you can barely see it. For example, it says, if line 15 is your if your taxable income is at least 3000 but between 3000 and 3050 your taxes if you are single 303 married filing jointly 303 married filing separately 303 let's go to a separate where there is a difference between them well let's assume you are you make between 30000 and 30,050. If you are single, your tax will be 3,406. Married filing jointly, 3,208. If you are married filing separately, 3,406. If you're head of a household, 3,321. So this is how you would find your tax based on this bracket. For example, if you're between, if your taxable income between 30 and 30,500, this is how you will find it. And, and this tax table will go up to 100,000. If you are more than 100,000, you have to use, you have to use another, another, another source, which is the federal tax rate schedule. And again, it will be provided for you. In my textbook, it's Appendix F, and this is what it looks like. There's one for, if you are single, you would use the one for single. I will show you how I'm going to be using it. One for married filing jointly, qualify widow or widower, married filing separately, head of a household. Now, the first thing you want to make sure is you're selecting the right table, okay? Because what happens is some students, they make the mistake of finding the answer in the wrong table. So if the, if the, if the tax, if the, if the person that you're finding the answer with is filing single, you would use this table. Married filing jointly, you would use this table, so on and so forth. Now I'm going to, I'm going to go back and show you how to use those tables to solve the problems that you're going to have to deal with in your course and to prepare you for this course as well as for the CPA exam. So let's go back to this problem to illustrate how to compute the taxes. We have Homer and Marge are married and will file a joint return. Homer has a W-2 income of 38,588. Marge has a W-2 income of 49,438. What is their tax liability? Now you have to be careful. They're giving you the W-2 income. They're not giving you their taxable income. So what you have to do first is take 38,588 plus 49,381. That's their income together. 
okay? But what we have to do is, after we compute the income for them, let me just keep this uh, calculator here because we are going to use it, 38,588 plus 49, whoops, let me reset this and then go through the plus. So we're going to have 38,000, 38,588 plus, plus 49,000, 381. So their total taxable income together is 87,000, 87,969. I'm sorry, that's their total income. Now we have to deduct the standard deduction and the standard deduction for married filing jointly for, for a married filing jointly happens to be 24,800 for year 2020 because we are dealing with year 2020. Now this could be different. If you are doing this in a different year, make sure you would use a different uh, standard deduction. So I'm going to deduct from their income the standard deduction of 24,800 and that's going to give me a taxable income of 63,000 169. This is their, we call this their taxable income. Okay, this was their total income. This was their total income. And this was the standard deduction, which is a deduction given based on your filing status. And they told us their married filing jointly. Now we haven't answered any questions yet. Now we have to find out what is their tax liability? How much taxes do they owe? using first the tax tables. So again, I, I snip the tax table and they are at the 63,169. So I'm going to go up here and this is the 63,000. I'm going to go 63,000. So they're between 63,150 and 63,200. They're in this bracket right here. They're married filing jointly. Therefore, their tax bill is 7,186. So 7,186. That's it. They're in this, they're in between those two and 7,186. Therefore, for the first answer from the tax table, their bill is 7,186. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the same computation using the tax rate schedule. Now, with the tax rate schedule, I snip it and I snip two. So they're, I'm going to be using this tax, this table this table and the way it works is this remember their taxable income is 63,169 now here's how it works the first 19,000 so their income from 0 to 19,750 so from 0 to 19,750 they will pay 10% on that so let's say 19,750 times 10% and that's they will be responsible for $1,975 for this first amount. Any amount they earned above $19,750 up to $80,250, they're going to have to pay the $1,975 that I just computed plus, so the $1,975 plus 12% of the amount in excess of $19,750. So look, so they have in total $63,000. 169 of this amount 169 of this amount i'm going to use a different color to show you that uh, of this amount 19,750 was already taxed at a rate of 10 percent. so i'm going to deduct from this amount 19,750 the remaining is 43,419 now this amount, it's going to be taxed in the next bracket, and maybe it, it might exceed the next bracket, but look, the next bracket, and what I mean by the next bracket, let me highlight the next bracket. I'm going to highlight, the, this is the next bracket. And let me show you how much, how big is that bracket. So this bracket is between 19,750 and 80,000. So 80,000, 80,250 minus 19,750 minus 19,750. The next bracket, the next bracket, this bracket here is, oops, let me go back. This bracket here, and what I mean by bracket is, 
as long as you are below this amount, 60,500, the difference between those two. As, as long as you don't make more than 60,500, okay, you're going to be taxed. Your tax will be the previous amount plus 12% of the amount and access of this. And notice, what re the remaining to be taxed is only 43412 So this is the amount remaining that need to be taxed. And this amount, how much are we going to pay on this amount? 12%. This is the remaining amount. Okay, let's do this. So I just, I, I just wanted to show you that the next 60500 will be taxed at 12%, but they're below this amount. What remain is 43419 Let's assume the remaining was 100000 Then... Let's assume the remaining was 100,000. Then 60,500 will be taxed at 12% and any extra will go into the third bracket. Okay? So now 43,004, let me see, 43,000, 43,419, and we're going to multiply this by 0 0.12, and that's equal to five thousand two hundred and ten dollars and twenty eight cent but remember we're gonna have to add those two numbers it's not, uh, it's one thousand nine hundred seventy five this number plus this number let's add them together plus nineteen seventy five and that's gonna give us seven thousand one hundred eighty five dollars and twenty eight cent so according to the tax uh, According according to this computation, to the tax rate schedule, their tax bill will be 7185.28. So according to the tax schedule, 7185.28. The difference is because uh, there's, you know, there's, there will be some difference because the tax rate schedule, it gives you between, you know, 60 uh, the the tax rate schedule will give you between 63150 the tax between and 63200 so it's going to give the it's going to compute the tax based on the mid range that's why there's a slight difference between the two in case you're wondering why the tax rate schedule is more accurate because you will compute this exactly per dollar amount okay now so that's that so we computed the tax liability, which is you need to know how to do this, which is you need to know how to do this. If I ask you, what is their marginal tax rate? What's their marginal tax rate? Their marginal tax rate is the is based on the last dollar they earn. How much was the last dollar was taxed at? Let's go back down here. The last dollar was taxed at 12%. Therefore, we say their marginal tax rate is 12% because they're in the 12% tax bracket. Therefore, their marginal tax rate is 12%. Their marginal tax rate is 12%. What is their average tax rate? Well, their average tax rate is how much did they did they ha did they have to pay taxes based on their taxable income? Well, we're going to go with the tax rate schedule. They have to pay 71 they have to they're responsible for 7185.28 and their taxable income is 63,169. Now what we can do is we can find out what's their average or effective tax rate. Effective tax rate, 71.85 divided by 63,169. And their average tax rate is 11.37. And hopefully the, the average tax rate makes sense, 11.37. And what, what, why did I say it has to make sense? It has to be less than 12 because that's the highest and remember they paid some money on 10 percent and they paid some taxes based on 12 percent therefore it has to be in in the middle but remember they paid more toward 12 percent therefore 11.37 makes sense makes sense so this is how we compute the average or effective tax rate so remember you need to know the difference between the marginal during the 12 percent marginal rate and here their marginal rate and their average rate are very close because they did not really deviate a lot from the uh deviate a lot you know between they went from 10 percent marginal tax rate to 12 and they stopped there so there's not much difference between 10 and 12 that's why the average is between the two and very close to the marginal okay so that's basically how we do the computation now again how would you learn how to do how to do the computation you work exercises you work practices i just showed you how to do this so you have to practice more exercises using the tables for example if somebody is making if their taxable income is seventy thousand, you have to go through the same thing the first seventeen 
19,750, they all pay 10%. Well, actually, I, I, I went through this step by step, but really you don't have to, I showed you this step by step. Actually, let me show you how to compute this. Let's assume someone's taxable income is 70,000. You don't have to do it the way I did it. The way I did it, I just wanted to show you the how we come up with this 17, 1975. So if someone's taxable income is 70,000, you don't have to go through every step. You would say 70,000 belongs to this bracket here. 70,000 is between 19,750 19, and 80,250. So what you do is you would say my taxes will be 1,900, and 75, which is I showed you how to do this, plus the amount and access of 19,750. Now you say, okay, 70,000 minus 19,750. Let's do this computation. I will do it on my phone. It's much easier than using the calculator on the computer because it's the, uh, the keys are very small. So I'm going to take 70,000 minus 19,750. minus 19750 and that's going to give me 50,250 and that amount is subject to 12 percent times 0 0.12 and that's equal to six thousand and thirty dollars therefore their tax will be 1975 plus six thousand and thirty dollars plus 1975 and their tax liability will be eight thousand and five dollars same concept will apply if i told you someone's taxable income is one hundred and uh, let me make it one hundred and eighty thousand if someone is one hundred and eighty thousand is their taxable income they belong in this tax bracket the, the marginal rate it's going to be 24 percent and what you do is it's you would say it's twenty nine thousand two hundred and eleven right here plus the amount in excess of 171 171 50 so 17150 therefore i'm going to take 180000 minus 17150 let me do that find that excess minus 17150 and that's going to give me 8950 dollars therefore it's 29000 to 211 plus 8950 and their total tax will be 38,161. So what's their marginal tax rate? Their marginal tax rate is 24%. They're in the 24% tax bracket. So this is how you find the tax using the tax rate schedule, the tax rate schedule, which is more accurate than the tax tables. But for your homework, make sure to follow what they're asking you. Are you being asked to compute the number using the tax table, or are you being asked to use the tax rate schedule to different computation? At the end of this recording, I would like to remind you to check out my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources, especially if you are a CPA candidate. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.